How is it going everybody? You're watching the Naval Tech and Apple Intelligence is finally available worldwide to everyone in pretty much every single language. So in this video, I'm going to show you how to actually use Apple Intelligence. What are the good, the great features that you can actually use on your day to day life, not the gimmicky stuff. So without further ado, let me show you how to properly use Apple Intelligence. And I want to start off with notifications because Apple Intelligence takes iPhone notifications to another level. Let me show you. So as I tap here on my lock screen to wake my iPhone, take a look at this notification right here with this awesome little animation saying priority notifications. This is one of Apple Intelligence new features regarding notifications and it's going to glow differently every single time and I love this notification. So as you can see right here, this is a missed call notification. As you can see, somebody phoned me three times. That's why my iPhone detected that this is a priority notification and this is all automatic. You don't have to set up absolutely anything. On the other hand, we have here right below a few iMessages. And as you can see, this is not priority. As you can see, this is normal notification. But as I go ahead here and unlock with my face, as you can see, there's a summary. It's saying, ask when iOS 18.4 video will be posted. But as a matter of fact, this is actually a combo of five notifications. If I go ahead and unlock once again, and I tap on the notifications themselves, as you can see, this is everything. So hello there, I was wondering when will the iOS 18.4 video be posted, thanks. So iPhone automatically summarize those five notifications into one. So ask when iOS 18.4 video will be posted. And this is so, so good for productivity, for day-to-day -day life, for messages, as you can see, because it's so common that we get tons of messages and having in just one notification, like one or two lines, a summary of what that person is actually saying is so, so good. So this combo right here, priority, in summary, this is a great combo. It works really good. And as I said, you don't have to set up anything. Your iPhone will automatically see if it's a phone call, if it's, for example, a message from somebody that you talk very frequently. It may be in the priority notification board right here. So it's very common that when my fiance sends messages to me, it is a priority notification, even though it's a message. But because the iPhone understands that every single time or most of the times I get this notification, I interact with it, I tap on it and I reply, it understands that this is a priority notification to me. So it's not gonna be just for phone calls. No, 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 it understand what's actually important to you, what's your priority, and then it'll put right here as your priority notification. So this is so cool automatic, one of my favorite Apple intelligent features. Another feature I use pretty much every day is this one. If you press and hold on your camera control button, you have visual intelligence. But the good news is you don't need to have an iPhone with a camera control to use this feature. You can actually use it now on the iPhone 15 Pro series as well, along with the iPhone 16e. So if you have one of those devices, you can simply pull down in your control center, tap and hold on any blank space here, add a control, scroll down a bit, and then add visual intelligence as you can see. So then you can use it from your control center, tap on it, and then you have camera control. And you have a third possibility, which is mapping visual intelligence as your action button on your settings. So you can do that. So everybody with a compatible Apple intelligence iPhone can use Apple intelligence, which most people don't know what's actually for. So let me show you. I'm gonna get this mug right here. So that's cold coffee mug, right? I've been drinking that my afternoon. So I'm gonna go ahead here and press and hold on my camera control. But as I said, you can use any of the three possibilities. And then it's a viewfinder. So it's your camera feed, right? I'm gonna put my iPhone slightly back and you're not gonna see it for a second. But what I'm gonna do is simply take a photo pressing on this button of the mug, all right? So it's your typical photo, let's say. So I'm gonna go ahead here, take a photo of the mug, and then as you can see, that's my photo. And then I can do pretty much two things. Number one, I can tap here on search, and then it's actually gonna reverse search this image. So it's your typical Google search, but using the image. But what I like the most is the ask feature, because I can use it to talk to ChatGPT about what's going on in my environment. Let me show you. I'm gonna tap here on ask, 
and then it's asking ChatGPT. We have the icon right here as well. And I can say, for example, what is this? Just a question, what's going on? What's this? So it's gonna work with ChatGPT, so Apple Intelligence and ChatGPT. And as you can see, this is a white ceramic mug with the Apple logo, likely part of the Apple's branded merchandise. So it's awesome. So it says, it says exactly what's going on. And of course, I can go on and on and on because this is ChatGPT, it's an open chat right now, and I can ask more information about it, whatever I want. But of course, this is not just for objects. You can use visual, visual intelligence for pretty much anything. If you see an animal that you don't know what it is, you can use ChatGPT, you can use visual intelligence, take a photo and ask what it is. You can use it for plants. And it's actually so smart that it will tell you exactly what plant it is, what tree it is, what kind of tree. It can say, for example, what breed of dog it is that you are using visual intelligence. And even better, because you can use pretty much anything in your environment to talk to ChatGPT about. For example, if you see a poster, and then it's a poster of a party with a band, and you don't know what it is, you can use visual intelligence and ask ChatGPT what band it is. When will this gig happen? Create an event on my Apple calendar with this show, with this concert. So it's actually super, very, extremely smart, and I use it all the time, and I recommend that you start using as well. Another thing I think you should start using is this. If you open up your photos, and then you have a typical photo of me in the gym, and let's say I wanna post this photo, but I don't like those two little bottles here in the back, for example. So I can go ahead, tap on it, and then tap on the settings option, adjustment options, and then I can tap on clean up, and then if it's the very first time you use it, it may take a few seconds to load, and then it already identifies some objects, but you can go ahead and tap on anything you wanna get rid of, but let me show you those two bottles. I'm gonna tap on it and then it's gonna get rid of it instantly. I'm gonna tap on the other one and then it's gonna get rid of it instantly as well. I can tap on done and then it's perfect. And if you take a look, it's incredible. You, you, you can't even see it was there. And this is a pretty challenging situation because there are mirrors here. So it's not that easy, but it makes it absolutely perfect. As I said, you can actually use it to remove people, objects, animals, whatever you want, and it's getting better and better every single day. I love the cleanup tool. Another thing that I love is this. If you pull down the control center once again, you have here your focus modes. If you tap on it, you probably have a few just like mine. So you have do not disturb, you have personal work, sleep. So you actually have, if you wanna use this feature properly, to set up and customize every single focus mode to manage your notifications and your phone calls for specific situations. But there's the thing, you can use the new reduce interruptions feature, which is a focus mode created by Apple intelligence. You tap on it and then it'll limit interruptions intelligently. So by the way, when you start using it, you have this little icon here at the top, which I think is pretty cool. So when you have this feature enabled, it'll actually reduce pretty much all notifications apart from the important ones. So remember in the beginning of the video when we were talking about priority notifications? So it works kind of the same way. When you have priority notifications, so whether it's a phone call, whether it's a text message from somebody you always talk to and it understands that, or from an app, an important app, it will notify you, it will let it go through, but if it's your typical notifications, it'll actually block them, it'll actually not notify them, They'll be right here in the notification center if you wanna check them out later, but they won't disturb you. And this is all automatic. You don't have to set up anything. It's gonna use Apple intelligence to do that for you. Of course, we have to talk about the new Siri. New interface, new design, but honestly guys, there's pretty much nothing new in Siri. Siri is still dumb. Siri doesn't work, Siri generally doesn't understand what we want, so the new Siri was actually delayed. Apple will only unveil it maybe in a few months, maybe in iOS 19, we don't know. But as a matter of fact, Siri is not smart. But there's now ChatGPT integration inside Siri, and that's pretty cool. So let me show you. Siri, can you help me plan a two week long trip to Europe? And as you can see, I'll need to use ChatGPT to write that. Should I go ahead? So you can use ChatGPT inside Siri. So that's the only way Siri is actually smarter, as you can see. And as you can see, uh, could you provide more information about the trip, the country, and so on? Can you help me with that? 
So working with ChatGPT, and as you can see, absolutely. So a ton of more information. So which cities, uh, the budget specifically, preferred activities, uh, and any specific places and so on. So you can actually talk to ChatGPT as if you were typing on the keyboard on ChatGPT website and then use ChatGPT like inside Siri. And I think this is a very good implementation. Like Siri is still bad, but at least smart ChatGPT is alongside with it. Now we wanna go through very quickly two features that are very well known in Apple intelligence. I have to talk about them, but honestly, I don't use them at all, but maybe you can find it interesting. So let's talk about Image Playground, which is this icon. And by the way, I know a lot of people that have deleted this icon, deleted this app, because they thought it was a game that their kids installed on their phones. It's so common, but this is kind of a game, but it's from Apple. So the idea here is that you can upload or describe an image and then play with it. So let me get this image, it's actually the suggestion, which is a photo of myself, a selfie, as you can see, and then it's gonna generate automatically this AI image representation of myself. So as you can see right here, we have actually three possibilities of representation. So we have animation, like 3D, we have illustration, so more like a drawing, and we have sketch, which is another type of drawing, as you can see, which represents me based on that photo. Let me go ahead and get back to animation. And then right here, the idea is that you can go ahead and play with it. So let me put a theme on it. Let me put a party theme on it. So I'm just gonna use my image party style with the animation style. And then there we go, we have this party. We have more options as well. Pretty cool, pretty interesting. Again, this is kind of a game. This is kind of something interesting that you can play for like 15 minutes, or maybe if you have a kid, you can play with them, but nothing more than that. That's why I don't wanna go through a lot. And of course, on the same kind of category, we have to talk about Genmoji. So let's talk about the Messages app, and keep in mind you can use this on any app that has a keyboard, so you can use this on WhatsApp, for example, as well. And the idea here is when you tap on the emoji uh, section, you have here maybe a couple hundred emoji options that everyone has, right? But with Genmoji, you can actually generate your emoji. You can create your emoji. So you can go ahead and tap on it. And then you can just describe what you want to be represented as an emoji. So for example, I can say pink building. So pink building. It's gonna start thinking, as you can see, there's no pink building emoji, right? So it's gonna create one for me. So as you can see, you can use it and that's pretty much it. You can add and send as an emoji, as a sticker. It's your choice. Again, I don't use it very much, but I think it's interesting for you to know. Moving on to the final parts of our video, let's talk about text. So if you write a lot or if you read a lot on your iPhone, you're gonna like that. So if I open up my notes app, but please keep in mind, everything that I'm showing here works in every single app on your iPhone. So notes, Safari, mail, messages, every single thing, okay? So if you go ahead and tap on the dedicated icon right here, we have the writing tools. And what you can do with it is you can interact, manage, and change any text that you have on your iPhone. So for example, you can proofread to check grammatically. You can rewrite, make it more friendly or professional. You can summarize any text. So this is very good for when you're writing something or if you're really revising some text from other people, okay? And you can go ahead and even describe what you wanna change specifically in the text. So if I tap here on describe or change, let's say I want to make it longer. So make the text longer. So for some reason, I need to write something and I need, for example, three pages and it's only two. So you can try and make it longer. As you can see, it definitely made it longer. So it's just going to add a ton of stuff. You can, of course, go back and get back to original and keep changing, keep moving. You can tap on this icon right here. It's the same thing, but what not everyone knows is that ChatGPT is also integrated in this feature. If you tap on Compose, you get ChatGPT. So you can go ahead and actually ask for ChatGPT's help. So instead of having to copy this text and paste in ChatGPT on your browser, you can go ahead and use it straight here in your Notes app or any app that you have on your iPhone. And you can work with ChatGPT to make it help you with absolutely any task that you want regarding writing. And last but not least, if we go ahead and open up our Safari, again, 
works on every app. And let's say you have an article, you have something you wanna read, but maybe you don't have a lot of time, or maybe the article is too long. What you can do is tap and hold, and then you can just select one single word if you want to. And then you can tap on writing tools, once again, as you can see, and then you have here, right here down below, the possibility to summarize or maybe give you some key points of what this text is all about. So as you can see right here, it's a huge article, but it's saying app side loading deadline. Apple has 90 days to allow app side loading in Brazil. This is actually huge news. Uh, Apple will appeal and the judge pointed out. Da -da -da. So you can pretty much in five lines read what the article is all about. So this is so, so cool, so nice. This possibility to interact, manage, play with text on your iPhone using Apple Intelligence, using ChatGPT. So that's pretty much it, guys. That's pretty much everything that I wanted to show you in this video, how to really use Apple Intelligence, how to properly use Apple Intelligence now that it's available on pretty much everyone's phones, as long as you have an iPhone 15 Pro, of course, worldwide in every major language. So. Thanks for watching this video. I appreciate it so much for sticking all the way to the end of it. And I'll see you on the next video as usual, guys. Bye-bye.